My name is Rose Amador LeBeau. I am President and CEO of CTC. Our mission is to help people through employment and education become self-sufficient. We have a day worker center. We have educational programs so people can get their GEDs. We serve a variety of people, people who've just become unemployed, people who have never worked. We work with homeless people. We work with people who have just gotten out of prison and have to re-enter the workforce. So we're full service. I think it's seeing people make the change, become successful, uh, make that transition, and actually having an impact on people's lives, a positive impact. To see these success stories is what it's all about. Hello, I'm Siwa Billy Rose Amador LeBeau, and this is Native Voice TV. Welcome to the show. I'd like to welcome my co host, Craig Pasqua. Yes, hi, Rose. How are uh, you? How's it going? Oh, wonderful. We have a wonderful guest today. We do, indeed. And very interesting. I'd like to welcome Michael Liu. Welcome, Michael. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, you know, yeah. we were talking before the show, and it's been eight years since you've done our show. Yeah, so you were one of our first guests about uh, first three years into the show, so I'm glad right. to have you back. I'm glad to be back. Find out all the things you've been involved in. And be glad to tell you guys what's all going on right. here. Yeah. Well, first, let's little, learn a little bit about you and your position at NASA. Okay. We someone from NASA. Yeah, I work, at, yes, I work at the NASA Ames Research Center, and I'm the Director for Safety and Mission Assurance. So what does all that mean? Well, what does that mean? My gosh, it, you know, our group handles making sure that we have things in place to prevent people from getting hurt at work. So, you know, we don't want any, any injuries or any sort of unplanned uh, uh, mess ups with equipment or buildings or anything. So we have a staff that uh, helps our safety program in that area. And in the mission insurance piece of the house, we work a lot of our programs and projects that uh, make sure that uh, we're doing things properly, we got proper testing, and that they work properly. So, you know, we, we do all kinds of things. You know, we do aircraft development, we do robotics, we do small satellites. And so when we make a small satellite or, or other piece of hardware, we want to make sure it works properly. We also do a lot of software development and, and all kinds of things. So we want to make sure that when we do that, the bugs are out of the software and, and oh, things work sure, right. Huh? So, so we help make that happen with overseeing hmm. a lot of the work there from a quality perspective. That must, oh, go ahead, no, go that must take a lot of training. Uh, yeah, we, have a, we have a really good staff and, and so my, my personal training, I, I got a degree in astronomy from Berkeley and so I, I started off computer programming and working in some facilities we call the arc jets and the wind tunnels and you know arc jets we do actually We'll call thermal testing, which is we develop heat shield and shuttle tile materials, and wow. and so there's a way to test them. You heat them up and make sure that the they're going to protect uh, the spacecraft uh, when it re-enters the atmosphere. So we have facility that does that, and then we also have some wind tunnels where we test different airplane designs and modifications and want anything that's flown has been through one of our wind tunnels. So really, yeah, I'm just so fascinated. Someone from NASA. Wow. Now how does I mean. As, uh, well, how did you get there? Have you always well, wanted to go to work for NASA or? In my case, it, it was, it's true because, you know, at, at my current vintage, if you will, uh, I was growing up when we were first sending humans into space. Uh -huh. So uh, we were doing the Mercury program, the uh, Gemini program, then the Apollo program, and then we went after that to the shuttle program. And, and now we have, uh, you know, an orbiting space station laboratory that's international. But when I was growing up, uh, when I was about five years old, I said, I want to work for NASA. Mm -hmm. And at that point, when I was young, I wanted to be an astronaut. So 
Uh, later on, I said, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of hazardous, so maybe I'll do something <laughs> a little different. So, so I got an interest in astronomy, and so I, I went to Berkeley and got a degree in astronomy. And after I graduated, I got into computer programming, and uh -huh. like I said before, working in the arc jet and the wind tunnels. And then after that, I moved over to safety. So that's what I do now. I'm the head of safety at NASA uh -huh. Ames. So Are there a lot of native astronauts and professionals at NASA? Well, we have one native astronaut that was John Harrington. Mm -hmm. He's since retired from the NASA program, and he's gone to the commercial astronaut side. And so he, we're very proud of him because he flew on, on this one of the space shuttle missions and, and did some spacewalks and stuff. It was really neat stuff. And so it was a pleasure meeting John. We met him a couple times. And mm -hmm. so it's a thrill to, to know John as a you know, native astronaut. And then I work with uh, astronauts in my daily job. You know, there's some folks at Ames that are astronauts or former astronauts, and and the head of the safety program within NASA is an astronaut, and so is the head of NASA. He's an astronaut. So so those folks have flown the space shuttle and uh, participated in, in space missions. So you get to kind of rub shoulders with uh, with astronauts, even though I'm not one myself. But uh, you know, it's neat working with, with people that have been in space. So. Do you work with uh, native youth that are aspiring to be astronauts or be in oh, your type of business? Absolutely. Uh, you know, in previous years, I, I would always go to the American Indian Science and Engineering, which is ACES, the conference mm -hmm. there, and talk to students all the time. Uh, we, we had a NASA booth there, and then occasionally we'd have John Harrington there, he was a big draw, so we'd, we'd have the kids come up and talk to him, and then we'd talk to the kids about you know what they want to do, because it's not only just being an astronaut, there's all kinds of things that NASA does. You know, We have lawyers, we have people that do maintenance work, facilities work, we uh -huh. have people that are engineers, we have people that are get into biology and chemistry and, and trying to discover life in the universe, and we have a lot of folks doing small satellites. And in fact, we got uh, some of the summer students we have are native. And in fact, we have some from Navajo Technical University in Crown Point, New Mexico that oh, come what and- what is that? Yeah, that's neat that, that they come and do some work in the summers, engineering work, and help building small satellites. So they learn you know, some of the manufacturing techniques and stuff. And so it's really neat. So we've got a relationship with, with them in that way. We have other native students that come do aeronautics research and things like that. So th it's, it varies what they want to do. And so it, 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 it's really good. So when the students come here to the, I guess to NASA Ames, right. do they live here? That's right, we have some on-site uh, dormitories or if, if they get full, we try to arrange places where they can stay. But uh, usually we prefer to have them on site so you don't have to, don't have to worry about uh, paying rent or anything like that. So, you know, or pay minimal rent so they, they it, make it affordable for them to come and work and experience the summer. I bet it's a big shock to come from the reservation out here to Silicon Valley. Yes, it is. And, uh, <laughs> to high Not just a financial shock, but yeah, uh, just, just all, uh, all the people in a different, you're, you're, you're uh, in a highly densely populated area and, and all the traffic and everything. And so, you know, we have a, a employee group at Ames called our Native American Advisory Committee. And so we try to touch base with the Native students that come on board and have lunch with them and, you know, kind of make them feel welcome. And so they serve as mentors? Yeah, some of them are actually, they, they, they mentor the students directly. So we have some researchers that bring some Native students in and they work with them. And so it, it's really nice to make that connection. Wow, that's great. Yeah. Tell me a little bit more about the school in New Mexico. Is right. this a, like a is it a high school or is it a college? It's a, it it was a two year college, mm -hmm. and a couple of years back they uh, became accredited as a four year university. Oh my so, goodness! So the That's first on the Navajo wonderful. Nation, Navajo Technical University, and it's in Crown Point, New Mexico. And in fact, I traveled with uh, our center director at the time, and went to their uh, grand opening ceremony where they had a ceremony for becoming a university. So it's very proud. And we've established a relationship where we bring these summer students on board to, to work with our engineering folks. And, and they actually get hands-on experience working on actual satellites and things. So it's really exciting. That is wonderful. Yeah. What's our student population, do you know? Oh, we get uh, about 900 to 1,000 summer students. And so, you know, a small wow. portion of that are Native That's students, wonderful. probably, you know, a dozen or 20 or so, depending mm -hmm. on the year. So it, we try to make sure we, we get some of our Native young folks on board. 
Wow, that, that's really fascinating. Yeah, do you have, when they come out here, do you have other activities they get involved in? Or are they just strictly there to hit the books? No, we, want, we try to give them an experience because they may end up starting you know, to work in one area, but we have so many things that go on at, at, at Ames that uh, we try to encourage them to talk to the other students, to go around, visit what the other students are doing. And we also have a, a summer a colloquium series where we have presenters talk about different aspects of research that NASA is conducting. And so it exposes the students to you know, all the different things that are going on. You know, we do biology, we look for life in space, we, you know, we invent new materials, we invent new spacecraft, we, people design new web pages, uh, we have computer programs and modeling and robotics and all this stuff that goes on that, that, uh, that the students get into and they, they help, uh, you know, our researchers and scientists and engineers actually make things that, that actually go into space or you know, wow. missions like that, so it's really neat. That is. Yeah. I wasn't even aware of, I guess, all the activities that go on at NASA right, right in its, right, what, Mountain View? That's right. Yeah, you know, when you think of NASA, some, a lot of folks think, well, that's where they launch the rockets. Exactly. Or, or that's that big in place in somewhere. Houston <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. or, or Florida, Houston. you know. <laughs> yeah. No, but we, we, we have NASA here. And, you know, we're known for our, our supercomputing capabilities. We're known for developing the heat shield materials that we, I talked about earlier. We're known for doing a lot of aeronautics research, both on, on airplane design as well as trying to help improve like things like air traffic control, trying to modernize and handle more capacity, make the airspace safer, and so you know, and make you know the routes more fuel efficient for the aircraft. Mm -hmm. You know, if you save fuel here and there, you make air flying cheaper. So, and, and we're getting into all that kind of research. Uh, we have folks that, uh, you know, do biology experiments on the space station. We make little satellites that go up in space and, and do various uh, scientific missions. You know, we have a space probe out there right now called Kepler, and it's looking for planets around other stars, and it's finding thousands and thousands of planets, and they're, what they want to do is try and identify those that are kind of the same size as the Earth or the same temperature range away from their stars the Earth. So that's a potential, you know, possible life. We don't know. There may be life in our solar system, so that's why we go to Mars, or that's why we want to look at some of the moons out there of Jupiter and Saturn, and because and there's a potential of water, life, and things like that out there, and so we're just looking for that. Yeah. Well, you'll have life. to get a native person out there first so they can put the flag down. <laughs> <laughs> now, you talked about the wind tunnels and everything. Right. I know you're not an astronaut, but have you ever, like, gone in there or gone on a spaceship just to check it out? Oh, we've gotten in the wind tunnels because okay. sometimes you have to check things out. You know, when I worked in the wind tunnels, we, we'd make sure all the wiring was hooked up right and that the, the, what we were testing was properly installed, so we would do that. Uh, going around to different parts of NASA, I've been able to visit other places, you know, like Kennedy at, at, uh, in Florida or uh, Johnson in Houston. And that's where they run a lot of the missions or do a lot of the launches. So, you know, in my, in my recent history, I've been able to observe a couple of launches, and it's been very exciting uh, to actually see, you know, the rocket, the, the satellite, the payload, you know, what we're developing. You know, and we're testing, you know, the next rocket that's going to send humans into space and, so, you know, and beyond. You know, we're trying to go to Mars and, and do all kinds of neat things out there. So, wow. Yeah. That is so cool. It is. <laughs> that is so cool. We'll be right back. You're watching Native Voice TV, and we're here with Michael Liu learning about NASA. So one of the other things I was curious about, have you had any reason to or any relationship with the Native tribes in your role at NASA? Actually, I have, and it, it was unexpected for me. Uh, this was you know, a few years after we formed, like I mentioned earlier, our Native American Advisory Committee, and so, you know, the, the, the agency was trying to identify all those folks with Native backgrounds so they can kind of collaborate and work together and participate in recruiting fairs and things like that to bring more Natives on board. And uh, so we established this contact and, and we, we had a space mission out of Ames called the Lunar Prospector. And we got called because just before the launch, they, they put some uh, human ashes on board of a, an 
astronaut, of a person who wanted to be an astronaut, uh, Gene Shoemaker. He was a famous scientist and did a lot of help and planning of, of lunar missions by helping the astronauts understand what it is they'd be dealing with, with the craters and the rocks and so on. And so uh, he unfortunately passed away and as an honoring, uh, they sent a piece of his cremated remains up on the spacecraft. And then that came out and that, that caused a, a a fluff with the uh, Navajo Nation. They didn't, they said we're, we're desecrating the moon and so what do we do? So uh -huh. that's an interesting thing you never expect. And you know. So how, how did the Navajo Nation contact NASA? So they, they contacted our headquarters mm -hmm. and so our headquarters said, well, we have to, you know, do, do something, have meetings and discussions and figure out how we're going to resolve this because, you know, the, the mission of NASA is to, you know, benefit everybody. We, we need to, you know, share our information with, with everybody, bring students in, share our knowledge, and, mm -hmm. and you know, it's not our intent to, uh, to, you know, insult or do anything to anybody, and so, you know, we had to work this. And so they got me involved with a team of folks that went out there and talked to spiritual elders on the reservation. We talked about what we could do to heal, you know, what happened, and mm -hmm. through ceremony, and then so y you try to work your way through cultural uh, through a cultural means of how to deal with certain things you never expected. And so I was involved in that and you know it turned out through ceremony to do a healing of the moon. And so, it, but from that point on it, it made us more aware in NASA that you know when we conduct certain missions and activities we have to understand are there cultural impacts? Not just native impacts but other cultures around the mm -hmm. world. You know other people have beliefs and things that could get impacted by some of the things that we do and we just need to be sensitive to that and so you know it's helped our awareness and it's helped us think about things as we plan our missions you know. So well, That's interesting. Yeah. So how was the Navajo Nation on top of that? I mean to know that that was all going on and to well, you know, to get in front of that whole issue. Yeah, I think the, the, the president at the time raised the issue and so, mm -hmm. you know, it so became in the news and stuff and so NASA said, we, well, you know, we need to discuss this and figure out how we work a solution and, and so they brought me in to, to help be part of that group that figured something out. So mm -hmm. it was interesting for me because uh, it's just when I started reconnecting back to my heritage and my culture and so I get to actually go back on the reservation and experience some of the cultural elements and what, you know, what does one do to, to, to resolve a situation like this? And you understand and learn that there's a deep culture, there's ceremonies, there's ways to do things. And there's a lot of you know, oral knowledge that exists in the various tribes that knows about the sky, the stars and everything because it's a part of nature. Right. And so, you know, it's arrogant of us to think we know everything because we don't. And so, you know, in fact, things I learned when I was young, we've relearned them or because of all the new discoveries that we've done with the, with the latest uh, probes and things we've sent out there. It's that the more we find out, the more we know, and the more we relearn things that we thought, you know, gee, there's no water on the moon. All of a sudden now, yes, there is water on the moon. Oh, there's water on Mercury. There's, there's water out there that we just weren't aware of. And if it's out there, you know, maybe we can use that to keep maybe human bases on the moon or Mars or things like that, that that sustain life for us. So, you know, those are things that are in our future. And maybe, you know, we'll have that native astronaut landing on Mars and, and yes. making the discoveries. Mm -hmm. so we'll, we'll just see. That is something. Yeah. Well, um, now, your, your background is just you're Navajo yourself. That's right. right. Yeah, so uh, you know, I, I did not grow up on the reservation, and, and so my dad is full Navajo. And about when I was about five years old, uh, my mom and dad got divorced, and so I lost contact with my dad. And then it took about 30 years before I reestablished contact. And I reestablished contact about the same time I was getting involved at NASA with our Native American group and, and with the ACES organization. And so I was really getting into both in a personal life as well as my work life, mm. getting connected back to the Native community. And that's how I established contacts. You know, there's the American Indian Alliance here and the Indian Health Center and, and people we met here that are, you know, were students back in the day at San Jose State and Stanford and, and Cal and so on. And so, you know, we've established a relationship with these young men that are young men and women that are now grown up and in the working life and we see them all the time and so it's fun to see people that we knew when they were younger and, and we connected because of some of the things that we did with 
with ACES and student outreach and things like that. So. so for the young student that's growing up now, what would you recommend? What course should they take if they want to go to work at NASA too? Well, we try to focus on what's called STEM, the science, technology, uh, engineering, and mathematics, but there are other activities too. Like I was mentioning, a lot of things that we do at NASA, it varies. We have folks that are on our security force, so they, they're police type background. We have folks that do firefighting. We have folks that are lawyers. We have folks that uh, uh, get into uh, purchasing and procurements. Mm -hmm. We have, you know, engineers, the scientists, and, and, you know, people that do all kinds of things. Basically, you know, what a city does, you know, in a way we do the same at, at our NASA center is that there's a, there's a structure that goes on. And so in my particular case, I'm the head of the safety department. So we, you know, make sure that people are able to work and then go home safely and then come back the next day. And we want to make sure that when we send a mission out there, it works right. So, you know, we try to help things work, you know. So should the kids get involved in STEM in high school to go into any of these fields? Would that be their best bet? High school, definitely, but we also want to inspire them younger to kind of keep up with their studies. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we also visit, you know, elementary schools oh. as well because, you know, you, you got to start. You started at five, right? Gotta, <laughs> yeah, me, I started at five, but uh, you, you got to start somewhere and you mm -hmm. got to, you know, keep people, young kids interested in, in those kind of things, you know? So you just never know where it's going to lead, you know? So you reconnected with your, your tribe, right. and have you gone back to visit, and what have, has that experience been like? Yeah, I go about once a year to visit my dad. He retired and now lives on the reservation, so he lives near Page, Arizona. So we go see him, and, and the, you know, the first time I went back, this was like the mid-1990s, uh, I, I met about 200 of my relatives I didn't know I had. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they said, you know, we knew someday you'd come back and oh, see us, so good. here I am. And so that was a fun experience trying to research, you know, how to how to reconnect with my relatives. And so, that, you know, I Put spent- Put a name tag on everybody. Yeah, right? yeah, so, <laughs> so what was your name again? <laughs> but then, then you learn to do things like eat mutton and, and mutton stew and all this stuff. So some of the, some of the, you know, native foods of the area. And it, so it's, it's been a lot of fun and I enjoy going back there. I have a connection. I, I, I just love, you know, not all, you know, some people love the desert, I do too. And so it, it's really uh, uh, amazing. Ah, oh, that's great. Yeah. And then you're a great role model for your own family and of course all the native people because it's not like there's a lot of people in the science fields. That's yeah. right. We want to make sure there's more people in Absolutely. science. We want to, you know, represent and say, hey, if I can do it, you guys can do it too. You know, think about that. Cause expand your what you could be. Because, you know, I go to native schools. I go to other schools too. And the young kids out there, they don't realize, oh, I could work at NASA. Really? How? How's that? So, you know, seeing people that work at NASA, it inspires them. You know, so. You need know. to do a lot of field trips right. and <laughs> so kids can see what the potential is. That's right. And when I go visit them, we, we kind of go through exercises. Well, let's say you had to live on the moon. What would you have to worry about? Well, you need air, you need water, you need food. Well, how do you think you'd do that? You know, so it makes them think uh -huh. about, you know, what they get into and what do they got to worry about? Gravity or, or being out in space or being protected from the sun, from radiation, all this stuff that, you know, you can get them thinking about, you know, what's it like to be out there, you know, and what do you have to do and, and, and how do you get there and is there a better way to get there? Can we in maybe invent faster rockets or something that get us there more quickly? So, you know, you, these are things that young kids have to solve because, right. you know, it takes us a while to go to Mars these days and what if we got there in less time than, and you want to make sure yeah. everything's perfect <laughs> so they'll oh get yeah. there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And safe. That's right. Yeah. You know, you want to make sure that when we spend all the money on these missions that the money, yeah. everything works and people are happy and all the neat things you discover. So, so do you need... Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, do you need calculus to do... Sometimes to do you this? do need calculus. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Calculus and sometimes you need physics and sometimes okay. you need... Uh, you know, uh, chemistry, because we have people that uh, are trying to make new materials or they're trying to understand, you know, what's the effect of this chemical in, in space. And it, so you, you're kind of discovering and inventing things as you go along. So. 
No, I guess so. Yeah. Won't be joining NASA soon. <laughs> <laughs> we'll watch it on TV. We'll watch, yeah, we'll watch it on TV. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We yeah. have folks like, that do TV <laughs> work too. So, you know. Oh, see, yeah, <laughs> there we, we go. Yeah. We can do a broadcast from All space. Right. That's yeah, right. We'll that's right. We need people to <laughs> broadcast what broadcast. it is we do, right? You know, hey, guess what happened at NASA today? Yeah, <laughs> we got a great mission, you know? That's right. So, so when they. T they took the ashes up there? Right. Did they leave the ashes there or they just took them it up was, on the trip? It was on the spacecraft and the spacecraft was orbiting the moon, studying it, and then eventually its fuel ran out and so it, 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 it crashed on the moon. So it, it, it's, oh, it's on the moon. So, gotcha. yeah, so it, was that intentional? I mean, they knew that the was going to happen. That was the end of the mission, but what was, you know, the, 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 the concern was that someone, that we put the ashes on and right. we should have thought about that, you know. But then y you get into discussions, well, what's right and what's wrong, you know, and, and a certain cultures say that's an honoring, and other cultures says, well, that's a desecration, and so, mm -hmm. you know, how do you deal with that, you know? You have to be sensitive to all, all thoughts, all beliefs, and, you know, that, and you do what you can. And, and in this case, there was a healing ceremony, and so, you know, that, mm -hmm. that, that's what was done. That was it was yeah. good that you were there to make right. that connection back to the tribe. Right, but it you know it raised sensitivity and awareness at NASA, mm -hmm. and so we think about these things more carefully now. So wow. that's good. Yeah. Going that's forward good. now, they yeah. will have that awareness. So that's that's right. wonderful. Oh, that's right. Yes. And I hope we get a lot more youth involved in the sciences and right. working with you at NASA. Yeah, I look forward to it. Yeah, so yeah. come on board, and we'd love to have you and show you what we do. So, All righty. Yeah. Well, thank you for being here. It's a pleasure to see you again yeah. and have you on the show after all these years. Well, thank you for yeah. having me back. Thank you. Oh, it's, yeah. it's our pleasure. Thank you for joining us. Like us on Facebook, and we'll see you next week on Native Voice TV. Indigenous soul, indigenous soul. Oh